Welcome everybody, here we are today with another video about fearless investing or how to become a fearless investor and of course I'm here again with Georgina Coma, who works with a lot of investors around this work. So I think today is going to be a pretty insightful video. Welcome Georgina. Thanks Perry. Yes, we've got some good information here to share. Yep, so we're going to start off with and you can see on the slide it says unconscious creating. So it's probably an important thing to do to clarify what do we mean by unconscious creating. Well, the first thing we want to say about being unconscious it means that it happens without awareness. So unconscious creating is creating results in any area of life, but specifically as an investor with investments. It means that you're not aware of all the parts of you, all the sub-personalities that are involved in your investing process. And that is highly dangerous because you're going to be controlled by parts of you. You're going to be controlled by sub-personalities that have beliefs that aren't supportive of successful investing. And of course, in an earlier video, we went through uh, a description of sub-personalities, what sub-personalities are, how these different sub-personalities have beliefs and emotions tied to them. And we postulated that the most important thing that you can do as an investor is get to know all these sub-personalities and how they impact you as an investor. So when you do that, you become what we call a conscious creator, meaning that you're very aware of all the different parts of you and how they impact you as you invest right in the moment. And of course that leads to self-mastery. That means that you're way less likely to sabotage yourself in some of the ways that we've mentioned already in this uh, video series about becoming a fearless investor. So let's get into it, Georgina. Okay, let's go. So the first thing, I just want to quickly go into a basic brief about some of the diagrams that we're going to be using. So you'll see on this diagram we've got a line through the symbol of a person. And above the line you can see a confident subpersonality and a fun subpersonality. And below the line you see this doubt, this anger, this calm part, this victim part, why it's me, these horrible things keep happening, um, the fearful part. So all these circles represent subpersonalities. Now the ones that are above the line means the person's conscious of them. And the subpersonalities below the line mean the person is unconscious of them, meaning that they're operating within their personality or their psyche outside of their awareness. And so it's important to start today with a basic rundown of when we feel safe. And we, we talk about comfort zones. Now, comfort zones are arrived at, and we've all experienced them. The comfort zone is we feel comfortable doing something. So as an example, um, tomorrow it's going to be three or four foot surf here where I live. And I'm going to paddle out, and I'm going to feel totally safe in that environment. Georgina, how would you feel if I took you for a surf tomorrow and it was three to four foot? Well, since I've never been on a surfboard in my life, I certainly wouldn't be heading into a surf that big. Correct. I wouldn't feel safe at all. Yeah, so just a perfect example, because uh, that's a competency zone for me. I spent my entire life in the ocean. I feel safe in most surf, some surf I don't, because I feel competent. I know what I'm doing. I know where to be. I know how to avoid um, being hurt most of the time. <laughs> Uh, had been hurt, but uh, I, I feel safe in those environments because I feel competent in those environments. So I know that my skills keep me safe as a surfer. Same thing in business. I've developed skills that keep me safe. So I feel competent in those areas. Now when we talk about competency, the sort of unconscious dynamic behind competency is that we are no longer afraid of failure, of poverty, of death, alienation. They're the basic types of um, 
primal drivers that impact everybody. So when we're in our competency zone, we're not thinking about being rejected or abandoned or loss or failure or those types of things because we know our skill set keeps us safe. We, we are a master of that domain. Okay? Now, if someone asked me tomorrow, to, to, today, to start trading futures tomorrow, I'm going to be moving outside of my competency zone, so I'm naturally going to start to meet some of those uh, emotions that we've just talked about, failure, fear of failure, the, the fear of loss, the fear of rejection, the fear of abandonment, any of those types of things. When we're in our competency zones, we feel in control, which leads to trust. So when you're in a competency zone leading to trust, you're in a comfort zone. Now many of you watching this, listening to this, will have experienced doing a job that you don't particularly like anymore. And you've got a part of you saying, hey, I want to go and do this other thing. That's more exciting to me. But you'll feel this other parts, or parts, and it will be parts, other sub-personalities saying, nah, just to stay here, I feel safe. That's because those sub-personalities are in their competency and comfort zone. And this is an important place to start today. Because as you see, if you're an unconscious creator, the moment you step outside the comfort zone or a competency zone towards what you want, if you're unconscious, you're going to be controlled by emotions that you're not even aware of. You'll see how this works. As we, we move into this structure, this system of creating and what goes on when people are outside of their comfort zones, you'll be going, aha, geez, I've done that many times. I can see that I've done that. Yes, yeah, so what happens when you are in your comfort zone, you trust, and, and in your competency zone? Well, when you're in your comfort zone, you can actually avoid consciously meeting and feeling the counterproductive beliefs and their uncomfortable emotions. So they're stored in our unconscious mind, and we're able then to keep them below that line. Um, when we're in our comfort zone, when we're trusting what we know and we're feeling competent, we can perform from the subpersonalities that are in our conscious mind, and they actually can help us to keep the, the parts that are a bit frightening or in our unconscious mind below the line. So um, that's something that when we're in that comfort zone, we can consciously avoid those uncomfortable feelings. Yeah, and Georgina, I, uh, one of the things that I've noticed is that working with people over the years, um, people will go as far as denying or even ignoring what they love or what they really want because they are afraid of hopping outside of competency zones and meeting those uh, emotions that belong to the subpersonalities that are now on the unconscious level. And that the, the, the human mind will use all sorts of excuses or justifications for not going for what it wants just to avoid the emotions associated with those sub-personalities. And I'm sure you've seen that's, the same thing. That's right, Perry, because actually what's been happening um, all along is those, those um, sub-personalities have been kept below the line or from the unconscious mind as a way of protecting um, us. So, so it's very, very um, normal and natural that when we first start doing this kind of work that there'll be sub-personalities that will be below the line that will prevent us from doing what we want to do because of the safety involved in not stepping out of that comfort zone. Great, thank you. Now what typically happens, and we sort of just touched on it a little bit, <laughs> because all human beings have a growth urge, and everyone watching this will relate to it. You know, you're in your competency zone, and you know, it's sort of getting a bit boring, you've done something for years, and you can feel a part of you going, hey, I want something new and exciting. Well, that's a part of you, a sub-personality that's saying, hey, I'm sick of doing this. I want to go and do this stuff. So in this particular example, let's just say this particular person's been in a job 
Um, they get paid for it. It's provided them with financial security. They, they, but they're a bit bored with that work. And the achiever part comes out and says, hey, you know what? I want to go and create financial freedom because it'd be a bit more exciting. And you may have an artist or an adventurer that says, yeah, yeah, if I'm financially free, then I can go and just spend my time creating this beautiful art or, or go traveling and doing adventures. And so at that point, there's going to be a bit of conflict. But in, in this conflict, by the way, will be between the, the subpersonalities that say, yeah, let's go do this, and the subpersonalities that are addicted, are addicted to the comfort zone that you're in. Let's just imagine that, you know, here you are, you start to, to go, okay, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it, and you go and you join results as an example. So it's property mentoring and you start to learn new things. So studying um, a property investing course, for example, if you're interested in, in achieving some new goals, you've had that achiever part of you saying, oh, let's go out and do something new. And you've agreed that, yes, let's go out and we'll go a little bit out of our comfort zone. We'll, we'll be able to trust and, and, and we're wanting to develop our competency zone. So we'll learn some new skills. We'll take on some new challenges, but we're going to have to work hard because this is an area that we aren't well um, accustomed to working in. So there's going to be lots of new information coming up for us. And so some of those subpersonalities that were below the line are going to start to come up into our conscious mind as this um, diagram indicates. There's some doubt that's gonna come up because we've never done it before. And there might be a part of us that says, we can't do it because we never have. But that's just the beginning of when we start coming a bit out of our comfort zone and we have to be prepared for that. Yeah, because we start to feel some uncomfortable emotions at that point. So as an example, um, you know, here you are, you're, 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 you're still working 40 or 50 hours a week in your job and you're coming home at night and you're studying how to invest effectively and properly. And on the weekends, you're going out to look at properties. And of course, at that point in time, you're going to suddenly meet these parts you've never met before because all of a sudden, you're working really hard. You've got to sacrifice some, something. And so you might meet a part that comes out of the unconscious and says, hey, I'm sacrificing too much. Georgina's already mentioned the parts that might say, hey, I can't do this, or self-doubt. You might meet this other part that says, hey, I, I want to go to the pub and have fun, or I want to go and play with my kids. And because of the study that you're doing, it's drawing this part out, going, hey, and it wants to stop, it wants you to go back to the old way of being. But at this point, it's not going to be too uncomfortable for you, but as Georgina quite rightly pointed out, you'll start to meet some of these other subpersonalities arising because you're a bit out of your comfort zone. And also you might be um, pushing other people who are around you, who are part of your life out of their comfort zone. So they may be wanting to pull you back into your, your previous comfort zone and not move out into this uncharted territory. <laughs> your wife or husband is an example. You know, coming back to what I just talked about, you're working all the time, you're studying, and they're like, well, I want to spend time with you, I don't like this new direction. So as Georgina said, they'll make, try to guilt you, which will trigger other sub-personalities with you. You might be compliant, go, oh, well, I want to please her, or I want to please him, so maybe I'll just put this investing thing on, on hold. So you start to see that the moment you move out of the competency zone, not only are you going to push against your own in the resistances that, that kept you in the old comfort zone, but other people will be triggered around you and they may have subpersonalities that push back against you, which will pull up even more subpersonalities. So Georgina, what happens here? You know, the person's been <laughs> studying training, they're about to invest in their first property. What's guaranteed to happen for 99% of, 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 of people in this situation? They've been studying, learning how to invest, but they're about to put their money on the line. Completely out of their comfort zone. 
they're, they're really worried about what's going on and all of these fears will come up. I know the first time I, I did an investment um, in property. I was really, really nervous. I'd done so much homework and all of this research, but still when I had to actually put money on the line, all of these fears came up within me and I had to deal with them. Yeah. It's really emotionally uncomfortable. These parts of us that we haven't seen for a long time surface up to our conscious awareness. And wow, uh, is that ever a challenging feeling emotionally, mentally, and even physically at times? Correct, and will whack you physically as these subpersonalities get triggered. Now, we're gonna stop here for a second and just sit here and have a look at well, why does it happen? So, first of all, at this point, as you go to invest, and we're going back to some of the information that we shared in an earlier training, your strategic or analytical sub-personalities have done all the learning, they've got all the knowledge, so they've checked this property off. You may have worked with your coach at Results Property Mentoring, and they've said, yeah, everything's got a green light. But of course, as we know, we're not just Spock from Star Trek, who, of course, was like a computer. He didn't have emotional sub-personalities impacting his decision-making processes. So strategically and analytically, the, the property investment you're about to get involved with stacks up. You go to put your money down. You're about to sign on the dotted line. And at that point, you're so far out of the competency zone, it's not funny. Because every story of all your sub-personalities will start to be to come up, your self-doubt will come up. If, if you have that as part of your patterning, whatever your particular form of patterning is, will start to arise at that moment. So patterning is the sub-personalities that tend to dominate you even from the unconscious level, whether you're aware of it or not. So going back to some of our early um, trainings about sub-personalities, you know, here you are about to invest and the sub-personality that holds the story that investing is unsafe, that, and though that belief was locked in because when you were growing up, all you ever heard about was, you know, from your mum and dad, was how Auntie Joan lost the family farm because she invested silly in a silly manner, and how the grandfather lost some property because he was silly with his investments. At that moment, even though you've analyzed Political parts have double checked everything, it will rise. Now, what's really important to understand, because remember this is about unconscious creating, the person experiencing this, who's unconscious, won't have any idea about what stories are arising, what beliefs are arising. They're just going to feel a whole bunch of uncomfortable emotions and have no knowledge of what those emotions really are. That's all, which is dangerous. Okay, so we just finish this off by saying when you're out of your comfort zone, you meet your uncomfortable emotions and your limiting patterns and beliefs. And again, the unconscious person doesn't even know it. They just feel uncomfortable emotions. They might feel sick in the stomach. The conscious creator, by the way, knows every sub-personality that's arising, every belief structure associated with those sub-personalities. They can see and understand there's a story. Now, we're not going to go into that today. That's for the next video. But I want you to see the difference between a conscious creator and an unconscious creator. Now, what happens for most people when these unconscious, um, the unconscious dam breaks <laughs> and these subpersonalities start to arise? As I said, they've got no conscious awareness. They just feel really uncomfortable emotions. What tends to happen, Georgina? Well, you know, those feelings that are so uncomfortable, uh, most people aren't able to handle them. So they'll, they'll back away. They'll pull away. They'll stop taking action. Um, it, it really, when this discomfort arises, it really triggers these unconscious beliefs and emotions. And we'll find other things that we believe are more important 
or surprisingly enough, some will, someone will come and interrupt us and instead of setting the boundary and saying, no, I'm busy doing this, we'll go and, and, and allow them to take us off our course. So it, it's very easy for us to move away from the goals that we have. Even though we were really strongly set, we went through and did all the research, we've got the results mentoring um, information with us and we've gone, gone over it with the mentor, but we're still going to be apprehensive and, and, and move away when some of these feelings come up, especially when we first start to become aware of them. We haven't been aware of them for so long. Once we start to recognize them, we can then start to have some power over them. But in our current reality, when we're feeling all of this uncomfortableness, we're going to stop moving towards our goal. For yeah, sure. the, un the unconscious person, as I said earlier, has no idea of the, the, the stories and the part the subpersonalities that are triggered and the beliefs that are triggered in this experience. They just feel uncomfortable emotions, so we know the unconscious creator tends to back away from their goal so that they can avoid the uncomfortable emotions that are surfacing. Yes, Perry, and all the reasons that they had in the first place for wanting to do the investment don't seem important anymore. No, because the emotional pain is more important, getting rid of this emotional pain or these uncomfortable feelings. Uh, many of you will recognize this as a pattern that plays out in many areas of your life, and it's because it's called a swing pattern. And a swing pattern happens in pretty much most areas, and most people experience this when they're trying to create something that might be a little bit challenging to them or, or that's completely new to them, meaning it's taken them right outside their comfort zone. So just think about this, how many times have you committed to achieving something and then when the going gets tough, because it does, as you start to move out of the competency zones, have you given up and reduced and gone back to the old comfort zone? It could be with fitness, it can be in relationships, it could be in any area of life, not just investing. And the reason, usually there's an elated feeling. <laughs> so oftentimes when that tension has gone because the uncomfortable emotions have, have controlled you with their stories and you go back to the old comfort zone, all those subpersonalities that were trying to control you in the investment process start to die back down, go back into the unconscious territory and you start to feel good again. So we know, and this is really important, that unconscious creators are controlled by their uncomfortable emotions. Their creative ability is controlled by their uncomfortable emotions. Wouldn't it be great to be Spock, Georgina? It <laughs> certainly would be. <laughs> and, no and emotions is, involved at all. What was that, Georgina? I said no emotion involved <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why, by the way, that you, when, when we look at becoming a fearless investor, you, you have to get to the point where you understand that creating good investment results is not just an outer game, it's an inner game. You have to deal, learn to deal with all these subpersonalities, your particular matrix of subpersonalities that tend to undermine you. If you don't, they will keep controlling you. I'm just going to go to one other slide. So typically, and I've put this at the end of this presentation for good reason. So you can see here, thought scramble, we call it a choke uh, in, in sporting terms, in, when, when there's a lot on the line, a, a sports person is considered to choke when they're overwhelmed through what we've just been through. Those emotions start surfacing under pressure to achieve a goal, a sporting goal, and the emotions choke them. It actually has the ability to um, impact uh, the adrenal glands, the amygdala, so you can't think straight, um, you get clouded by emotion, confused, feeling unproductive, moody. So someone can feel, have those experiences, as we said, when they're here. They can feel a lot of those things that we've just mentioned. But I think it's also important to point out that at this point, when a person's experiencing this, as we said, this is when they start to tend to go backwards. 
But I also want to say that people that procrastinate or don't go at 100% towards their investment goals or who lose focus, and you can see that all those three things, losing focus, getting busy with other stuff or, or procrastinating, they're all behaviours that we use to avoid feeling these feelings, to avoid experiencing that. Okay? So for those of you that are procrastinating, be very aware or losing focus or doing busy stuff instead of the stuff you should be doing to, to improve your investment results, that those behaviours are simply a way of you trying to protect yourself from experiencing this. That's all. So again, you'll see how this model works. Georgina, anything else you want to share about this before we finish up? Well, just just for, for people who are, you know, just listening to this kind of information for the first time, it's, it's important to recognize that this is just the way that we always have been without having any awareness of that we of the fact that we can be any different. So we don't want anyone to feel bad about it or hard on themselves because there is ways of moving past these patterns and that's what the work that we do is all about. So it's important to have that knowledge, understand that there are parts of us that really want to protect us and, and, and keep us safe, but those parts are counter uh, counteracting the parts that really want us to grow and move forward. So it can seem a little bit confusing when both of those parts are, are, are moving through us. Um, it can, can lead us to feel uncomfortable, but there is ways we have tools and knowledge and information that we can share that can help you move through those uncomfortable feelings. Great. Thanks, Georgina. Thanks, everybody.